And welcome to the historic Patterson Field in downtown Montgomery, Alabama for day two of this conference baseball championship tournament for the Southern States Athletic Conference. Daryl Puckett here with you on the broadcast through all four games today. And today, game one matchup is between the number seven seeded Gruton Parker Barons and against the number six seeded Bethel University Wildcats. This game is looked to be a dandy of a one, but We'll take a quick break, and we'll come back and give you a little bit of information about the pitching matchups and a quick overview of the lineups as we pause for the national anthem. We'll come back to you for first pitch here at Patterson Field. We'll take a quick break. You're listening to the Southern States Sports Network. And play ball here. First pitch is coming right up. We'll quickly go over the pitching matchups for Bethel and Bruton Parker. But first for the visiting team, we'll go over their starting pitcher. For the Wildcats, on the mound making his 12th start of the season is John Woodard. He has a record of 3-6 and six with a 468 ERA. So Woodard will be on the mound We'll see how he'll take on. His counterpart on the other side will be for the Barons, Travis Higgs, a 5-2 record, 6.88 ERA, making his eighth start of the season. So it'll look like the home team will be Bruton Parker, basically how they do it. It's an old-school coin flip after each game to see who will be the home team. A little uh, not common anymore. Usually the higher-ranked team is the home team, but not in the Southern States. They've decided to do a coin flip. So the lower-ranked team, Bruton Parker, will be the home. So they'll be out on the field playing defense first. And on the mound will again be Travis Higgs, 5-2, 6-8-8 ERA, and make it his eighth star of the year. So the lineup he'll face against the number six-ranked Bethel University Wildcats, led by skipper Rusty Thompson, 17-25 on the season and 13-14 overall in conference play. Batting leadoff is Wes Warren, the second baseman. Batting second, playing short is Kendall Atkinson. Batting third, playing right is Lucas Riddick. Batting fourth, playing first base is Sam Seaton. Batting fifth, playing third is Ismael Sanchez in the hot corner. Batting sixth, doing the catching for the Wildcats is Chase Howell. Batting seventh, playing left field is Michael Brasilli. Batting eighth, doing the DH today is Colton Kell. And wrap it off, playing center field is at nine is Cody Allen. So again, quickly, one through nine, looks like this. Warren, Atkinson, Riddick, Seaton, Sanchez, Howell, Brasilli, Kell, and Owen. And the defense of the line, we'll go over quickly the lineup for Bruton Parker and give it to you again later. Batting first, playing center is Grayson Yamins. Batting second, playing right field is Clay Fenwick. Batting third, playing first is Mike Parker. Batting fourth, doing the catching is Brett Stedman. Batting fifth, playing third base is Brandon Bynum. Batting six, doing the DH today is Levi Osteen. Batting seventh, playing left field is Dylan Gay. 
Batting eighth, doing the shortstop, catching the defense in the infield is Justin Brown. And to wrap it up, batting ninth, playing second base is Brent McFarlane. One through nine looks like this. Yemens, Fenwick, Parker, Stedman, Bynum, Osteen, Gay, Brown, and McFarlane. So the first batter of the game will be Wes Warren for Bethel. Batting a 355 average, one home run, 23 runs batted in, and 53 hits on the season. And he does have 11 doubles. Here's the first pitch from Higgs. Fastball out or half for strike one. So starting off quickly in this count, that's that's a good thing you like to see on the mound from Higgs. The loser of this game will be the first one out of the tournament. Double elimination. Here's the 1. Swing, hit right side. It's going to stay in play, but it's out in fair territory. Over next to the track, over by the hospitality tent, so the count is 0-2. So 0 and 2, Higgs at the plate to Warren. Coming through the windup, here's Higgs, 0 2 pitch. It's going to hit him in the head. And not too bad, though. He turned it right off the top of the helmet. So Warren will go at first. He'll be hit by pinch. Up next will be Kendall Atkinson, the shortstop. Now Atkinson's batting right under 300, 298. Three home runs, though. 22 runs batted in. And for the lefty, he has 39 hits on the season, so looking for number 40 in this at bat. So Higgs will step on the rubber. He'll tow it up. No outs, top of the first inning. He'll come set. Takes a long pause on the mound. Now ball comes a glove outside. Here's a pitch. Fastball a little low. Try to bunt out, but brought it back. It'll be ball one. So 1 0 is the count. Later on in this game, around the third, fourth inning, we'll take a dive in the major leagues, look at some games to look forward to, especially Braves and Rays. Red Sox, too, for Scott Chaney. Here's the pitch inside. Bunted at. It's going out to first. Parker will pick it up, toss it over to set or first to McFarland. so that will be a 3-4 put out. But the sacrifice does get the runner over to second. That's Warren. Off the sacks. Up next will be the right fielder, Lucas Riddick. And Riddick, no doubt, has probably been the most impressive defensive player in this tournament so far. Playing right field has made some spectacular catches. Two huge dimes out there early in yesterday's matchup. Played a really good game. So with one out, runner on second. Here's the pitch from Higgs at the plate. Inside. Is he going to hit him? And it will. He hit him right in his right thigh. And that will put two on. So the second hit batter, Riddick will walk over to first. Now in seconds, Warren, Riddick will be on first. So Higgs is going to have to hone in on his command. He's been a little sporadic so far. But yesterday, Bethel played and lost 5-1 to one against number three seed William Carey. And that game was a big one. Bethel really just... Had a lot of opportunities, but bad luck in different scenarios did not help him. So, up to the plate will be Sam Seaton, the first baseman. Batting 326. Leads the team in home runs. First pitch, strike outside. But 5 to 1 was that score. Bethel lost yesterday. Bruton Parker, though, they played Faulkner and played him close. They lost that game 2 to nothing. And a final in nine innings. Here's the second pitch. Fouled off out of play. It's 0-2. Now that game, I'll be honest, it ended a little weird. If you're watching the the live feed through our YouTube channel with the broadcast, Faulkner won that game 2-0. It would have been a runner on third and first. And it was a runner on first through this play hitting the infield. And it was flipped over short, and here's the pitch. It swung and hit out to center field. And that'll be Yemens, and he'll come up under it, and he'll make the catch for out number two. So an F.A., and up next will be the third baseman, Ismael Sanchez. Sanchez will come in the batter's box. And batting from the right side box. The lefty will come up against Higgs. It's two outs. But there was a runner's interference call over at second. 
And I'll be the first one to tell you that I was one of the biggest ones up here disagreeing with the call. In my opinion, you just don't in a game like that. That was probably the third or fourth call that I kind of question on the day. Overall, it's been pretty consistent from the umpires. Here's the first pinch. It swung and popped up out to right field. Fenwick giving chase, and he'll catch it. And that will be out number three for here at the top of the first inning. So that will do it for Bethel. And they'll strand two runners, one on second and first. <laughs> yes, I'll come back and talk to Brains in the bottom half of the first. Thanks for that. But that will finish out the top half of the first inning. And Bethel strands two, but they'll be out. Coming out will be John Woodard on the mound to face his Bruton Parker lineup. And Grayson Yamans will come up first when we return. It's Wildcats nothing, Barons nothing. Listen to Southern State Sports Network. That for you, it's all about flavor. You want unique combinations that truly tempt your taste buds. Culinary classics that go to a whole new level. You like being served fresh takes on old favorites. All in a fun, stylish, casual place to be. All we want is to see that smile when you take your very first bite. So come see us at Nuke's Eatery. Bottom of the first. How about Tim Lewis? SID for AUM is doing the sound system, the official score, and messing around with the scoreboard occasionally. And he's picking out some good tunes throughout this tournament. So back on the field, John Woodard will be on the mound for the Wildcats. Woodard looks a lot like this. 3-6 and six record, 4.68 ER, making his 12th start. So up to the play will be Grayson Yamans. And here's the first pitch, up high, fastball outside for ball one. So coming around on the mound, and here's the windup. And the pitch, fastball swung through and missed, it's one and one. So Woodard, 6'6", senior from Phoenix, Arizona, is on the mound. Making his 12th start. Here's the 1-1 pitch. Fastball up in the zone. Strike two. And really, Bethel has, they have talent. They're a good little ball club. They really are. They play fundamental baseball. But a lot of luck has just not gone their way. The pitch outside just misses for ball. It's 2-2. Two and two. Still tied up here. 0-0 zero to zero between the Wildcats and Barons. Woodard is on the mound for Bethel. Fires and kicks to 2-2. Outside just misses for ball three. But going back when I was talking about yesterday's call between Faulkner and Bruton Parker, the game was ended in the top of the ninth inning. Here's a pinch. Swung through and missed. That'll be out number one with a strikeout. And that'll be one down. So Woodard gets on the board for his first K. And up next will be Clay Fenwick, the right fielder. For Bruton Parker, batting 412, two home runs, 20 runs batted in, and he does have 15 doubles. But the play in second, runner's interference, and honestly, you know, I could have seen it if the runner went out of the baseline, came back in, but the, you know, the style of baseball, here's the first pitch, it's ripped right up the middle for a single, so a one-out single out to center to Owen, and Fenwick will be on with one out. First baseman, Mike Parker will come up now. This guy's all power for Bruton Parker. The most dangerous hitter in the lineup, power wise. Batting 346, seven home runs, 37 runs batted in. And on the season, he's hit 10 doubles. So Woodard will have to bear down out here and pitch low in the zone. And again, the game of baseball, 
you have the right if you're a runner going to second to slide foot you know foot first and if you want to put a spike right into a guy's knee well guess what you can do it that's a game of baseball that's exactly what he did he was called interference first pinch is outside for ball one so that's that's the only thing that kind of gets me you know it, it seems like nowadays baseball is moving more into a way of a of more soft sport you know the rules are starting to be a little pushed around and that right there was no doubt a really bad call in a big situation here's a breaking ball 1-0 misses that'll be ball two so that's just my two cents about it I know I had others that disagreed with me about the call but hey you know I call it how I see it and that play at second was not needed. Here's the 2-0 pitch. Swung through and missed. High fastball. And it'll be 2-1. and one. So that's how Bruton Parker got to this game. Not saying they would have came back and tied it or even won it, but still it would have been fair. It would have been two outs around on third and first with a big opportunity for them at the plate. Here's the pitch. Swung through and missed again. Parker is now even in the count. 2-2. Two and two. Coming set at the plate. Looks on. Here's the pinch. 2-2-2. Two, two, two. Swung through and miss. And that will be strikeout number two for John Woodard. And out number two. So with the runner on first with two outs, up comes the catcher, Brett Stedman. Stedman batting 347. One home run. He's driven in 20 on the year. So Stedman will step in the righty. Brett Stedman, 6'2 senior from Stewart, Florida. He'll step in against Woodard. Now, if Bethel can get a good pitching performance, I'm not saying he's got to go six, seven, eight innings, but if he can get a quality five from Woodard on the mound, they'll have a chance. First pitch is a strike outside, and it's 0 and 1. I said it from the start of this tournament yesterday from game one that the team that's going to win this tournament. Is either going to have such a good offensive explosion where they just score more runs than everybody, regardless of the pitching, or the team with the deepest pitching rotation bullpen will win. Here's the second pitch. Fastball swung through and missed, and it's 0-2. So two of those teams I really think to have a deep chance just with their pitching. It could be Faulkner. I think they have a really good chance with their pitching and AUM. Here's the 0-2. Swung through and miss. A hill strikeout three, leaving a runner on first base. So after Woodard gets that one out single up the middle, he comes back and strikes out two more, and that will do it for one inning of play. Here in game one of four at the historic Patterson Field for the Southern States Conference Baseball Championship Tournament. So I'll be done with one. Up next will be Chase Howell for Bethel. He'll come off and lead it. In the top of the second inning, we'll return. It's Barons nothing, Wildcats nothing. You're listening to Southern States Sports Network. A dream, a beautiful dream. I couldn't believe how real it seems. Up on stage in the field of green. On the winding river, on the sun you'll see. Top of the second. 
Chase Howell, the catcher for Bethel, will lead off. Still on the mound, Travis Higgs for the Barons. The righty versus righty. Howell, 306 hitter. Here's the first pitch. Throws it past the catcher. And that will be ball one. Stedman just misses that. But Higgs kind of threw it past him. Here's the 1-0 pitch to the plate. Inside, just misses. Ball two, it's 2-0. Two so looking on for the 2-0 pitch to Stedman. Here it is, up high, fastball. And that's 3-0. So how at the plate has a good opportunity to go ahead and get an early base runner for Bethel. Because pushing guys to the plate has been difficult for the Wildcats. The 3-0 pitch goes in there for a strike. It's 3-1. And here's the windup in the pitch. Fouled off back to the backstop. It's 3-2. and two. I promise you I'll have a good trivia question today. It'll be something that you've never heard of in your life. I just I just found a, a stat that will even stump some of the smartest Google searching stat guys out there. Here's a 3-2. And it's dribbled out to first. Just fouled down the line. We'll redo it 3-2. and two. So promise that will be good. That will come to you in the top of the fourth inning. We'll give you top of the third, so when we're in away. We're talking about today in baseball history. It's a goodie as well. We'll let you know what that is. And somewhere in throughout this tournament today as well in this game one, we'll talk Braves and Rays. We'll talk about what happened last night in today's games. Here's the pitch. Fouled off to the backstop. Again, it'll be three and two. Chase Howell, the junior from Station Camp, Tennessee, has got a 3-2 count. And here's a pitch from Higgs. Outside fastball. He's going to go down looking. And Howell will take a seat. That will be the first strikeout for Higgs on the day. And there's one down. Coming up to the play will be left field Michael Brasilli. So Brasilli, he's one of those guys that Bethel really needs for him to get out of a little bit of slump he's in. He's dropped down the line just a little bit. Batting 266, got five runs batted in, nine doubles, and they need this righty to keep going. Here's the first pitch, fastball outer half, strike one. Looking up on the count, here's the windup in the one pitch. It's swung, hit, right side. First baseman, second baseman's going to come up again, and that'll be McFarland. And that'll be two down. So quickly, Bethel's gone one, two, two outs. And up next will be the number eight hitter, the DH, Colton Kell. So Kell will come in. Kell played okay yesterday. Didn't play spectacular. But he played okay. They're going to need him to come up here and start a two-out rally. Two out rally. Here's the first pitch to the plate to Kell. Just misses with the fastball. It's 1 0. And Kell from Jackson, Tennessee. He's a sophomore. The lefty will look in. Here's the 1 0 pitch. Outside just misses again. And it's 2 0. The winner of this game, they'll still stay in the loser's bracket. But they'll play tomorrow at 10 a.m. They'll get the early game again. Here's the 2-0 pitch. Just misses with a, with a breaking ball outside. It's 3-0. I don't know. Higgs has struggled just a little bit with command. He's hit two batters. And here's the pitch. Outside. Gets a call. 3-1. I think I've only seen one time in this tournament that a player has been walked in four straight pitches. Other than that, Every time it's been 3-0, somehow the pitchers have found somewhat close to the zone and make it 3-1. Here's the pitch. Outside, misses, and Kale will take a walk with two outs up to first base. So coming out with two outs, 
to try to start this rally will be Cody Owen, the center fielder. Center fielder Cody Owen. Now Owen on the in this starting one through nine is batting ninth. He does have the lowest batting average, two twenty nine. He only has sixty hits on the season. But Owen will take his crack at it right here. So two outs. And Bethel hasn't had a hit yet. But they're going to side. Owen won't get it, so it'll be a pinch hitter. They'll run on up there. And pitch hitting will be Taylor Patterson. He'll come in and play that center field position most likely. So here's Patterson at the plate. The first pitch, Hicks takes his time, looks at first, and here it is. Fastball, strike one. So you've got to wonder a little bit what happened to Owen. Or maybe it was just a better opportunity. Maybe maybe Rusty Thompson said, hey, you know, we're, we're just going to play Patterson, see what he can get. So Owen's account with two outs here, top of the second inning. It's still 0-0. Zero to zero. Here's the pitch, and it's going to be foul. Caught by the catcher behind him, but it'll be 0-2. Oh so game two today. That will start at 1 p.m. That will stick down in the loser's bracket. That will be number eight, Bellhaven. They'll play number four, Martin Methodist. That game, 1 o'clock scheduled first pitch. Higgs, 0-2 pitch. Here it is. Out to outer half, and he's going to go down looking. So Patterson will take a seat. That will be the second strikeout in this game and the second of this inning for oh, Travis wow. Higgs. So that will do it. It takes four batters to retire the side, but he gets it to go. And that will be it for the top of the second inning. We'll return and be the bottom half. And Bruton Parker will come up with Brandon Bynum to lead off. It's Wildcats nothing, Barons nothing. You're listening to the SSAC Sports Network. At Nukes, we know that for you, it's all about flavor. You want unique combinations that truly tempt your taste buds. Culinary classics that go to a whole new level. You like being served fresh takes on old favorites. All in a fun, stylish, casual place to be. All we want is to see that smile when you take your very first bite. So come see us at Nukes Eatery. Bottom half of the second inning. And a little bit of a substitution for you. Michael Brasilli, he'll go and take Helms and take over center field for Bethel. And Patterson will take over for left field for Brasilli. So Owen will check out. Here's the first pitch. Swung through and missed. Bottom at the plate is down 0-1. He wants to talk about empty seating. Yeah, he wants to talk about empty seating. So the count's 0-1. Bynum. Batting 238. Here's the pitch. Swung through and miss again. It's 0 2. So let's take a look at the National League East standings. That's the one Braves are in. Now the Braves, one game under 500 at 10 and 11, but they are sitting in second place. Here's 0 2 pitch in the dirt, breaking ball for a chase. And it's 1 and 2. Surprising. Look at the Mets. The New York Mets are 15 and 7. Eight games over 500 in first place in the NL East. You don't see that often. Miami behind Atlanta at 10 and 12. Here's the one-two pinch on the mound. Ground ball out to short. Picked up by Atkinson. Makes the throw across the diamond. Over to first. Or a 6-3 put out. Out number one. So one down here in the bottom of the second inning. It's still tied up 0-0 zero to zero between the Wildcats and Barons. And D.H. Levi Osteen will come up to the plate. Osteen came in for the injured. Ty Kelly yesterday. 
And he's one of those big players for the Barons. Was injured right shoulder late in that game. And Osteen came in. So Osteen DHing today. He'll come up to lefty. First pitch is outside for ball one. But behind Miami, so we go New York Mets 15 and 7, Braves 10 and 11, Miami 10 and 12. Behind them is the Washington Nationals at 9 13. Here's the pitch. It swung and hit left side out of play. It's 1 and 1. So the Nationals at 9 13. And guess who's last? You know, it's, this order looks a little weird just because a couple years ago you wouldn't see the Philadelphia Phillies in last with an 8 and 14 record. Here's the pitch. It's fouled off to the backstop, one and two. So the Braves, you know, you're talking about a team that really just kind of reset everything. Traded off a lot of players, a lot of, let a lot of players go. And it looks like a pretty much new team this season. Here's the pitch. Swung through and miss. And Woodard to have his fourth strikeout of the day and out number two here in the bottom half of the second inning. So Osteen will take a seat, and Dylan Gay will come up to left fielder for the Barons. He'll take his first A.B. of this tournament. He's batting well below Mendoza line at 167. He's got two runs batted in. First pitch is out or half for a ball one. So one owes a count to Gay. He's only got four hits on the season in his limited time. So it's a righty righty matchup. And here's the windup in the pitch. Far and outside for a ball two. Well, let's look around in the National League again. Let's look in the Central. St. Louis is 14 and 6. The Cubbies are right behind them at 12 and 8. Behind them is Pittsburgh at 12 and 10. And here's the 2 0 pitch. Fastball. It's hit right side. Foul out of play. And it'll be 2 and 1. But Pittsburgh, 12 and 10. Cincinnati, probably my team, you know, just. Going back and seeing them when I was growing up. A little backstory there, but the Reds, 10 and 11, and Milwaukee right at the bottom at 5 and 17, so they're struggling this year. Here's a 2 1. Up high in the zone, and they're going to appeal to first, and he did go around. It's 2 and 2. The National League West looks like this Dodgers at 13 and 8, Rockies 11 and 10, San Diego 11 and 12. They're in third. The Diamondbacks are 10 and 11 in fourth. And in fifth is the Giants at 9 13. The Giants started off losing, what, the first six, seven games? Here's a 2 2 pitch. Outside, swung away and miss. And that's going to be strikeout number five of the day for Woodard. And I'll be out number three. So that'll do it through two innings of play here in game one of four. In day two at Patterson Field, the winner will be eliminated, but the winner will move on to play tomorrow at 10 o'clock, and that will be a big game there. We'll tell you who they'll play when we return. Your score after two innings, Wildcats nothing, Barons nothing, on the Southern State Sports Network. Top of the third inning, coming off to be the leadoff hitter, Wes Warren. On the mound for the Barons still is Travis Higgs. We have a question from Amy Smith. 
And to answer Amy Smith, your question, thanks for talking with us on the broadcast. Here's the first pitch. Fastball, it's hit right side. And out of play for 0-1 to Warren. And to answer your question, yes, all games will be nine innings or we'll play whatever innings needed. If it's extra baseball, we'll play it. So each game will go to a winner is declared in this tournament. And here's the one pitch. Fastball, it's fouled up again, out of play. And it'll be 0-2. That's in the stands. And almost a nice catch out there. Almost got a little excitement. It's 0-2. Just to clarify something, Ismael Sanchez is a switch hitter. Thanks for the email, Derek Hubble. They count 0 2 to warn the leadoff hitter. Hit by pitch is first AB. And here's Higgs with the pitch. Fastball, foul off again. And it'll stick 0 2. So 0-2 is the count to Wes Warren. He was hit by pitch, later was sacrificed over to second, but then stranded. That's kind of how this tournament's went for Bethel. Left a lot of people on base. They've only made it to third a few times. Just really having trouble hitting with runners in scoring position. And here's the 0-2 pitch, outside fastball, and that's going to strike out Warren, so he'll take a seat. He fought and battled at the plate, but it won't be good enough in the end. And Warren retires a third K for Higgs. And Ken Wackerson, the shortstop, will come up. He's 0 for 1. He grounded out to first base, then later tossed over to second to McFarland. So he's 0 for 1 with a 3-4 put out. And here's the first pitch. Fastball out or half will miss. And it's ball one. So here's the windup in the pitch. The 1-0. Fastball. It's found off to the screen. And it's 1-1. One one. So again, we're talking about the Braves. And the Braves, you know. A lot of people thought rebuilding here. And really, they're in second. And... You know, that that might change. Here's the pinch. Outside breaking ball. It's going to land a little low. So the count will be 2-1. and one. But the Braves, you know, they're, they're young. They have a young rotation. Got Shelby Miller out of trade from St. Louis. Here's the pinch. Swung and hit left side. Giving chases by him. But it's going to just get out of play in the stands. And the count will be 2-2. Two and two. But Atlanta has a chance to make a run towards the end. Is it likely? I think the first half will. I think the Braves will be competitive in the first half. I think towards the second, and really when you only have Miller, you have Hulu Teheran. It's really your best two pitchers. Here's the pitch in the dirt. Did he go around? They're going to say it didn't, so it'll be 3 and 2 to Kendall Atkinson. Higgs almost got another strikeout. He's got three on the day so far through two innings and a third. Only one hit recording this game, and that was early on. Here's the pitch, the 3-2, fouling off out of play. He'll stick 3-2. and two. And Really, more impressively, how about the Mets? They acquired, they acquired a pitcher called him, called him. It's Bartolo Colon. Was lost him for a second, but since Colon's come over, I believe his record's 4-1. and one. Here's the pitch. It's stroked out to the left field. Going back is Gay. He'll give chase, but he'll get up under it for out number two. So two up, two down, and here comes the right fielder, Lucas Riddick. Bethel seems like that. You know, they've been able to hit early on in innings. And a few times they've got some hits with two outs, but... Really being aggressive early in counts have gotten him in trouble and left him high and dry in most innings. Here's the wind up in the pitch. It's swung away. Single up the middle. And Yeomans will come up with it. it will be a two-out single for Lucas Riddick. So Sam Seaton will come up. Seaton flew out to center his last A.B. He was the second out of the top of the first inning. So Seton will come up 0 for 1. The righty will dig in. 
On deck is the switch hitter, Ismael Sanchez. Hicks comes set from the rubber. Here's the pitch. Fastball a little low for ball one. So it's 1-0 oh to Seaton. So top of the third inning. Still nothing, nothing game. Only two hits in this game so far. Here's the pitch and the swing. It's a stroke out to center, but he's going to get around on his Yeomans. And that will do it. So that will be a fly out to center field. So Seaton's come up twice, and both has resulted in a fly out to Yeomans out in center. And so that will do it for Bethel in the top half of the third inning. They'll get a hit and strand a runner on first base. So when we return, it will be Bruton Parker. And Justin Brown, the shortstop, to come up for his first A.B. of the game. Your score is Barons nothing, Wildcats nothing. You listen to SSAC Sports Network. Bottom of the third inning. Barons nothing, Wildcats nothing. Daryl Puckett here with you on the broadcast. You can tweet or email any questions or concerns to me at Daryl Puckett on Twitter or at the email at dpcket14, that's with one T, at gmail.com. So up to the play will be Justin Brown, the shortstop for Bruton Parker. And John Woodard, through two innings, has five strikeouts. He's been pitching strong. Here's the first pitch. It's swung through and missed. Strike one to Brown. So we're coming close to the top of the fourth. We'll start getting to today in baseball history. Trivia question. Here's the pitch. Again, second pitch. Swung through and missed. It's 0-2. Brown's down early in the count. So we've kind of highlighted the NL East. Went through the Central. Kind of talked about the whole NL. Talk about the American League as well. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Swung through and miss. And three straight pitches. And Brown will swing and whiff on all three for strikeout number six and out number one. And up next will be Brent McFarlane. Six Ks for John Woodard. He's only thrown 30 pitches in this game. 21 for strikes and nine for balls. And it looks like he's getting stronger on the mound. The big lanky righty. And here's the first pitch to McFarlane. Fastball in the dirt inside for ball one. Looking on, gets a call from Howe behind the plate. Here's the windup in the pitch, the 1-0. Fastball, it's popped up. It's going to stay in play, it looks like. Howell's going to give chase. He'll come up and make the catch near the warning track, the gravel track, and the backstop, and that will be out number two. So two down, two up, two down, and Grayson Yamans will come up. Yamans struck out his first A.B., so the lefty will dig in. Batting from the right side's batter's box. And here's Woodard. He has pitched exceptionally well in this game so far for the Wildcats. The pitch swung through and miss inside fastball. And strike out one. So strike one. And here's Yeomans. The pitch. Fastball in the dirt outside. It's one and one. Give you a few games to look forward to in the major leagues. If you're a Braves fan, I'll let you know where they're playing. Here's the pitch. Breaking ball up high. 
And just never got on top of it. He'll get past the catcher and how. And it'll be 2 and 1. Tonight in Atlanta, it'll be 7 10 p.m. Eastern Time Zone. That's first pitch in Atlanta for the 10 11 Braves. They'll take on the 10 11 Cincinnati Reds. Shelby Miller on the mound tonight. Here is the 2 1 pitch outside. Gets a call. It's 2 and 2. Good looking pitch to Yeomans. On the mound for Cincinnati will be Mike Leak. Shelby Miller, though, 3 0 with the 2 205 ERA. Here's the pitch. Outside fastball just misses, and the count's full, 3 and 2. So, Shelby Miller, a really good pickup for the Braves from the Cardinals. That was one of the good trades they made. A lot of people think they didn't have many of them. So, here's a 3 2 pitch. Fastball, it's swung and hit left side. Pop up out to left field. That's going to be Patterson coming on. He'll make the catch. And that'll be a fly out to left field, so that will do it. That'll do it for three innings of play. And three up, three down for John Woodard. And through three innings, this guy's got six Ks. He's pitched well. And that'll do it for three. So the score, as it reads, coming to the top of the fourth inning will be Ismail Sanchez, the leadoff. It's Wildcats nothing. Barron's nothing when we return to the Southern States Athletic Conference Sports Network. Top of the fourth inning, still tying up zero all. And Ismael Sanchez will come up to the plate. He'll bat from the right side. Still on the mound, it's Travis Higgs for the Barons. Here's the pitch, swung out and hit to short. Picked up from Brown. He'll make a throw to first, and he'll be safe. So Sanchez will lug out the infield single. Good work from Sanchez to hustle down the line. And so that's good news. So one pitch from Higgs is a swing to short, and he'll lug out a single. And up next will be the catcher, Chase Howell. Catcher, Howell Chase struck Howell. out his first A.B., so he's 0 for 1. That's a 40, 43 pitches thrown from Higgs on the mound. 29 for strikes, 14 for balls. So Higgs giving, giving way, getting ready. Comes set. Belt high, bending down to bunt is Howell. Here's the bunt. It's a line drive out of third. Dive, though, and it comes right off his glove from Parker. And it'll be 0 and 1. Good effort from Parker at first. And the count will be 0 1 with no outs. Runner on first. So here is the trivia question of the game. It's going to be two part, as I always do. feel like it makes it a little bit more interesting. So the question is two part, first part. Who is the all-time leader in sacrifice fly balls, so sack flies, in Major League history? Here's a hint. He played first base. So, part A, who's the all-time leader in sack flies? Here's the bunt. Second pitch. Goes foul. It's 0-2. And how? I'll tell you, it's been difficult laying down a bunt in this tournament. There hasn't been many. It's actually been laid down successfully. So again, the question is, who's the all-time leader in the major league all-time for sack flies? And second part, who 
Waiting on, here's the 0-2 pitch. Coming set, takes a glance at first at Sanchez. Here's the pitch to Howell. Outside, fastball in the dirt. It's 1-2. and two. And the second part is Hank Aaron is in the top 10. Hank Aaron is in the top 10. Where did he finish all time in the sack fly top 10 record score for the major league? So the question, sack flies, who's number one all time, and where did Hank Aaron finish in the top 10? You can email your answers to me at Twitter at Daryl Puckett. That's just at Daryl Puckett, one word, or sent to me in an email. And Here's the one-two pitch. Swing is a hit between third and short. That will get through the hole. And so if no out, Sanchez will move over to second. Howe will get the one-two single between the hole and third and short. So if nobody out, two guys on on second and first. And Michael Brasilli. So Zane Mathis will come in and pinch run for Howell. So it's Mathis now on first base. So Brasili at the plate. He's 0 for 1. He flew out to second base. Again, you can email your answer to dpcket14 at gmail.com. And we'll give you the answer in a few innings. Looking on. Here's Brasili. Set to bunt. Pitches far and outside. He'll pull it back. It's one ball, no strikes. And I'm telling you, look, look, look. Trying to get you something from Sam Kinehans, the assistant commissioner of Southern States. We could probably do a t-shirt or something. This, of course, is mostly for fun. I'm a big stat guy. And I love Major League stats, so this is why we do it. Here's the 1-0 pinch. Looks on. It's for silly. Just set to bunt. It's going to be inside. Just misses, and it'll be 2-0. So now you've now you got to decide... If you're Rusty Thompson over third, giving your calls. The 2-0 count, do you really want your guy to bunt? And you're playing small ball still. But Brasili right now, he's not swinging a hot bat, but he's a guy who can get around and, and get a hit. A single right here is going to score Sanchez. to be the first run of the game. Higgs will come set, take a glance at Sex Sanchez. Here's the pitch. Fastball out or half, and that will be strike one. So it's two and one. So that is your trivia question of the game. I'll repeat it. Part one, who's the all-time leader in the major league stat category for sacrifice fly, sack flies. And Hank Aaron's in the top ten. Where do you finish? Either email me that at dpcket14 at gmail.com or tweet it at Daryl Puckett, one word. So infield's coming up. Here's the pickoff at second, but nobody's there. Higgs will just step off. He's close to the ball. He's going to have to watch out. Game two today. Will look like this. Number eight, Bell Haven. Number four, Martin Memphis. Still square off the Blazers and the Red Hawks. Here's the pitch. Bun it out right to the pitcher. Throwing the third. That's going to be a force out. And Sanchez will be called out. So the count right there, two and one. And Brasili makes a bad bunt. So he'll bunt it right to the pitcher. That'll be a fielder's choice. Sanchez will be scratched out. Mathis will make it a second. So we'll, we'll basically two it over again. But Colton Kell will come up to DH. So Kell will come up, batting from the left side. There's a runner on first. That's for Silly. Mathis on second. So it's no ball, no strikes. Here's the first pinch outside for a ball one. So it's one and oh. One ball, no strikes. One ball, no strikes to Kell. On deck is Taylor, pa Taylor Patterson. Looks on. Higgs in a little bit of trouble. Trying to get out of it here. He's going to have two hits. Here's the pitch. High and tight fastball. Swung away and miss. It's now one and one. So again, Braves will play tonight. 7 10 p.m. Eastern Time. First pitch in Atlanta. It'll be Shelby Miller on the mound up against the Reds. 
Four more games to look at. We'll let you know. Not many today in the major leagues. Here's the pitch. Outside fastball. Strike two. It counts one and two. So the earliest game start today. First pitch will be 1.45 p.m. Eastern time zone. That will be the Phillies and the Cardinals. So that game will start at 1.45 again. Here's Higgs on the mound. The 1-2. The pitch. Breaking ball outside just misses, and it's 2-2 two and two to Kell. Colton Kell, he's one of those guys that, he's in the bottom half of the lineup, but he's a guy that can really be consistent and hit. And Bethel really needs a big base hit right here. It's really what they've been lacking all tournament so far. Here's a breaking ball, loses it, and it'll be 3-2. and two. So three balls, two strikes to Colton Kell. Travis Higgs is on the mound. Still, he's, he's pitched well in this game. A little bit. I'm still getting a, a status of bad. So here's a 3-2 pitch. It's fouled off left side and out of play. And we'll redo it again, 3-2. I got you. We'll go over some finals of what happened yesterday and let you know the recap of how we got to where we got. I sure appreciate it, Murray. Right, Here's a 3-2. One out. Takes a glance at second. Now comes the plate. Fastball inside and Kell will strike out looking. And Higgs is pumped up on the mound now. He gets a big fist pump going down. And that'll be another strikeout. That's his fourth of the game. And more importantly, out number two. So, Patterson, Taylor Patterson will come up. Now the left fielder, Taylor Patterson. Patterson is, is 0 for 1, struck out his first A.B. So, Wildcats are looking on to let another opportunity slip through their, their palms. Here's the pitch, hit out to second, and flipped over to second base, a 4-6 put out. And there will be another two left on for Bethel. And right now the Wildcats just struggling. They're doing a good job getting guys on base, but have not advanced one to third yet in this game. But another two left on, and I'll do for the top of the fourth inning. Return we'll will be the bottom half of the fourth, and Clay Finmuck, the right fielder for the Barons, will lead off. Your score is Barons nothing, Wildcats nothing. You're listening to Southern States baseball. On stage in the field of green on the winding river on the song you'll sing when I wake up I'll see you here in Montgomery where dreams come true I had a dream a beautiful dream I couldn't believe how real it seemed on stage in the field of green on the winding river on the song you'll sing when I wake up I'll see you here in Montgomery where dreams come true I had a dream a beautiful dream I couldn't believe how real it seemed on stage in the field of green on the winding the bottom of the fourth inning and Clay Fenwick will come up to lead off the right fielder for the Barons he's had the lone single in this game for Bruton Parker he did that in the bottom half of the first inning so he's one for one and here is John Woodard on the mound first pitch fastball outside for strike one I tell you what if Woodard can get even one run of support. He's pitching well enough, and he's pitching really good, too. Here's the one pitch. Swung through. It's hit out. Fly ball to right field. It's going to be Riddick up under, and he'll get it for out number one. So one down. Mike Parker will come up next. He struck out his first A.B. But going back to it, Woodard, this guy is really, I'm not saying he's pitching so far the best in the tournament at this point in the game. But I'm saying he's one of the, he's he's one of those up there 
He's really thrown really, really well on the mound. Has such command. He's got some speed to his pitches. And he's controlling command-wise with his breaking stuff. Here's the pinch. Fouled off to the screen. And it'll be 0-1. So Parker down 0-1 in the count. And Parker's a big guy. He's a big hitter in the three-hole in this lineup for Bruton Parker. He's not played well. And the Barons need him to start turning it on. Here's the pitch. Breaking ball inside. Strike two. Parker didn't know what to do with that pinch. So it's no balls, two strikes, one out. What are they looking on? He's going to step off, take some time. Howell's going to call time and come talk to him. Maybe confused about the pitch call. It is a beautiful day here out in historical Patterson Field. A little true story about it. Behind it, one street over, you can see it from here where I'm sitting in the press box, is a cemetery. And that's where Hank Sr., Hank Williams Sr., is buried. Here is the 0-2 pitch up high fastball for a ball. It's 1-2. and two. So Hank Williams Sr. is buried out in that cemetery right next to his wife. So backstory out here in Montgomery. Pretty legendary. The 1-2 pitch. Breaking ball inside. Hits the dirt. It's 2-2. Two and, two. and you know, there have been stories of Bo Jackson. Bo Jackson were at Faulkner's Field. I told this yesterday a little bit. But there was also a little story about him at Patterson taking batting practice. Him hitting shots out to the street in left field. Here's the pitch up high for ball three. Counts now full. It's 3.30 out in left and right. 372 in left center, 380 in dead, and 364 in right center. So imagine 330 bombs out to that street. That's probably about 400 foot. Here's a 3-2 pitch. Fastball. It's hit out to left field. Going back is Patterson. He's going back. He's just going to miss it diving in left field. Ball's going to hit the wall. And Parker's going to be around with a stand-up double. And the throw comes in. Gets past Atkinson with a relay, but they'll get behind it. And gobbled up will be Sanchez. So Parker will get a one-out double to left field. That's really what the Barons need. They need to get something going, and Parker is their big bat. And he can do it. So at the plate now will be Brett Stedman with one out and an RBI opportunity with a man in scoring position at second base. On deck is Brandon Bynum, the third baseman. It's Stedman, the catcher, up there now. He's 0 for 1, struck out his first A-B. Here's the pitch to the plate, breaking ball up high, and he'll miss 1-0. So the next top half inning we'll talk about today in baseball history. Probably my favorite segment of all time. Do it every game. And here's Woodard. Do 1-0 pitch outside in the dirt for ball 2. It's two balls, no strikes to the catcher, Stedman, of the Barons. And I promise you this will be a good one. It happened on April 30th, back in 1958. That's a little teaser. So here's the 2-0 pitch. Fastball, it's hit. High ball out to left field. Going back is Patterson. It's going to be close at the track. He'll come back and make the catch, throw his relay into the third base. And caught by Sanchez. So good job for Patterson coming to this game. As Owen went out in center, Brasili went to center. And he's coming playing left. So he's doing a good job fielding his position left. And that will be two down. So now Brandon Bynum will take his chance. He grounded out, out to short to Atkinson, his first A-B. So with two outs, a runner in scoring position. And it looks like Woodard might get out of this after giving up the one-out double to Mike Parker. So here's Bynum at the plate. Two outs. Here's the first pitch. Fastball swung through and miss. It's 0-1. And Bynum's last A-B. He was down 0-1. Or, excuse me, down 0-2. Worked the count 1-2. And then grounded out. So taking big cuts today for Bynum. Here's Woodard the pitch. It's hit right side. And it's going to be foul. So he'll start 0-2 this time. Again for Bynum. All right now, Martin Methodist team just coming around. You see him in the stands. About to fill in. 
decent crowd for an early morning game between Bethel and Bruton Parker. So coming set on the mound's order at the 0-2 of two outs. Runner on second. Bottom of the fourth. Here's the pitch. Fastball inside, and Bynum will go down looking. And that will be another strikeout on the day for John Woodard. So he'll get out of a jam after giving out the one-out double to left field. And that will do it for four innings here at Patterson Field for game number one. We're in turn to be top of the fifth. And coming leadoff will be leadoff man Wes Warren for the Wildcats. Your score reads this. Each team has two hits. But it's all tied up. Wildcats nothing, Barons nothing. And we'll return. You'll see the Southern States Athletic Conference Sports Network. At Nukes, we know that for you, it's all about flavor. You want unique combinations that truly tempt your taste buds. Culinary classics that go to a whole new level. You like being served fresh takes on old favorites. All in a fun, stylish, casual place to be. All we want is to see that smile when you take your very first bite. So come see us at Nukes Eatery. Top of the fifth, Wildcats nothing, Barons nothing. Game one here on the SSAC Sports Network. Daryl Puckett here with you on the call. So Wes Warner will come up, the leadoff man, second baseman. He on the day was hit by pitch his first AB and struck out later in the top of the third. So he's, he's over on the day. Travis Hicks still on the mound. Takes the lineup, and here's the pitch. Fastball outside, misses far and out, and it's 1-0. So today in baseball history, I said it happened April 30th back in 1958. And this one's about Ted Williams. So for you Williams fans, here's the pitch. Fastball outside, strike one. So back in 1958, on this exact day, Ted Williams collects his 1,000th extra base hit. Here's the pitch. Outside again for strike on the corner. It's one and two. So he collects his 1,000th one extra base hit when he homers off Ned Garver in the ninth inning and in Boston's 11-4 loss to Kansas City at Fenway Park. And here's the 1-2 pitch outside for a ball. Now it's 2-2. Two and two. So the spended splinter, as they called him, is the 10th major leaguer to accomplish the feat back in 58. Here's a 2-2 pitch, fouled off right side at the hospitality tent, and it'll stay 2-2. Two two. So a little bit for you Red Sox fans. For Ted Williams back in 58, on April 30th, he collects his 1,000th extra base hit with a home run. Here's a pitch. It swung and hit right side to right field. Fenwick is under it, and he'll catch it for out number one. So up next will be the shortstop, Kendall Atkinson. He's 0 for 2. Flew out to left field and grounded out to first base in his two at-bats. So that's Ted Williams. We'll tell you, we have a winner for the trivia question. Didn't take long for this game. We'll let you know who it is in the bottom half of this inning. Here's a fastball outside for ball one. But again, back in 58, Ted Williams collects his 1,000th Extra base hit. It's a home run off Ned Garver in the ninth inning as Boston got destroyed by by Kansas City 11-4 at Fenway Park. But the Splendid Splinter, what an awesome nickname. The 1-0 pitch is in the dirt, so it's two balls, no strikes. Here's the windup in the pitch from Higgs. Fastball out and misses again. It's 3-0. That happened back in 
April 30th, 1958. And Williams is the 10th major leaguer at that time to accomplish that feat. So here's the 3-0 pinch. Higgs inside for strike one. I swear. It's about a 98, 99 percentile. A 3 0 is going to be a 3 1. Here's the pitch. Swung through. It's going to be fouled off. Just gets a piece of it. And it's 3 2. So Atkinson at the plate. Batting from the left side in the right batter's box. And here's the 3 2 pitch. It's hit out to short. Picked up off a big hop from Braille and makes the throw to first. It'll be a 6 3 put out for out number two. So from Brown to Parker. And now Duke for Atkinson and the right fielder Lucas Riddick will come up. He has one of the two hits for the Barons. He was hit by pitch and he had a single in his last AB. Oh, excuse me, one of two hits for the Wildcats. So he'll come up now, batting from the left side. So it's Riddick versus Higgs. Here's the first pitch to the plate. Misses again outside. It's for a ball. So 1 0 is the count. Bethel right now hitting in this game is hitting 200. So not a high average right there for the Wildcats. Here's the 1 0 pitch. It's up high. Misses. It'll be 2 0. But Bruton Parker hitting a little bit worse. They're batting 143. So the count is 2 0 to Lucas Riddick, the right fielder. And here's the windup in the pitch. It swung and hit, popped up out to left field. Gay will get up under it, and the ball will come down in his mitt for out number three. So that will do it for the top of the fifth inning. We'll come back. We'll tell you who the winner of the trivia question of the game is, and it will be the bottom half of the fifth. Will with Levi Osteen coming up to DH to lead off for Bruton Parker. Your score reads, Wildcats nothing, Barons nothing. You listen to SSAC Sports Network. Bottom half of the fifth inning. Bruton Parker will be at the play. Bottom half. Levi Osteen will lead off. He's 0 for 1. Has struck out once. So DH will come up. Osteen. He'll come in to back from the left side against the righty. Jordan. John Woodard. He has seven Ks through four. Here's the first pitch. Strike inside, and it's 0-1. And I have a winner. A good answer. Here, here's the pitch. Fouled off. It's 0-2. So, Steen down the count. So, the question was, I'll repeat it. Who was the all-time leader in sacrifice flies in the major league? So that's all-time career stats in the majors. Here's the pitch. Foul off right side. It'll stick 0-2. So Steen will have to battle here. Down 0-2 in the count to Woodard looking for his eighth K. The answer is Eddie Murray. So Eddie Murray... Was number one. Swung through and miss, and that'll be strikeout number eight. And Osteen will sit down. So up next will be Dylan Gay, the left fielder. He's also struck out in his first AB, and he's 0 for 1. So the answer is Eddie Murray. 
And the second part of that question was, where did Hank Aaron finish in the top ten? And he finished fourth all time. Cal Ripken was second. And here's the pitch. First pitch misses for ball one. It's 1-0 to, to game. Number three was Robin Yunt. So Yunt was third. And Hammer and Hank was fourth. Here's the 1-0 pitch in the dirt. It's 2-0. So Gay up in the count. So Eddie Murray's leader in all time. He had 128 sack flies in his career. Hank Aaron had 121. Cal Ripken with 127. And Yunt had 123. Here's the 2-0. Pitch fouled off to the back screen. And it's 2-1. So the winner is Derek Hubble. <laughs> Derek, thanks for sending in your answers. We had a few few wrong, so you were the one that was correct. Here's a 2-1 pitch. Outside misses. It's now 3-1. So, Derek, as a promise, I will try to get you a tournament shirt. Derek, if you're here, send me an email and let me know you're here. I could probably swing that. Here's a 3-1 pitch. Breaking ball in for 3-2. Hey, look now. So, if you're here listening or going to be here, you answer a trivia question right. That increases your chances of getting a prize. Here's a 3-2 pitch. It's going to be hit out to right field, but second baseman's going to get up under. It's Warren, and he'll catch a little blooper in right field for out number two. So Justin Brown, the shortstop, will come up. He's 0 for 1. He's also struck out his first AP. So, Derek, if you are here, please come see me in the press box. The lower press box. At Patterson Field. And I'll see what I can do. I'm sure we can swing you something. You've been emailing a lot. I appreciate your interest in the broadcast. But hey, don't be discouraged if you haven't won a trivia question yet. We'll have three more for today. So here on the mound is John Woodard. 62 pitches total in this, in this game. Here's the pitch. It's fouled off to the back. To Brown, and it's going to start 0-1 in the count. So if two down here in the bottom of the fifth inning, this game is still scoreless. Barons nothing, Wildcats nothing. Each team with two hits apiece. But Bethel has had more base runners. They just keep leaving them on base. Here's the pitch. Fouling off out of play again. He'll be 0-2. Looking for his ninth strikeout. If he reaches double digits, that will be the most in this tournament. I believe nine was the best yesterday in round one. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Fastball in the dirt for a ball one. So thanks, Derek Hubble, for playing and sending an email. So don't be shy. Send your questions on. Just let me know you're listening. We'll give you a shout-out. Email me at dpuckett 14 at gmail.com. So stepping off the mound will be Woodard. To restart it, it'll be one and two. He'll tow back up the rubber. From the windup, takes his time. Now here he comes, the one-two pitch to the plate. Fastball, it's a ground ball up to short. Picked up by Atkinson. Here's a throw off one foot, and he'll make it to first base to Seaton. So a 6-3 put out, and that'll do it for five innings of play here. We're still tied up. Wildcats nothing, Barons nothing, but when we come back, it'll be top of the sixth inning, and Sam Seaton, the first baseman for the Wildcats, will lead off. Your score still tied 0-0 zero zero on return. Listen to Southern State's Baseball Conference Championship Tournament on the SSAC Sports Network. At Nukes, we know that for you, it's all about flavor. You want unique combinations that truly tempt your taste buds. Culinary classics that go to a whole new level. You like being served fresh takes on old favorites. All in a fun, stylish, casual place to be. All we want is to see that smile when you take your very first bite. So come see us at Nuke's Eatery.
So top of the sixth inning. And Wildcats will come up. It'll be Sam Seaton, the first baseman. Still in the mound, Travis Higgs. And here's the first pitch. It's going to be inside foul. And it'll be 0-1. 75 pitches total for Higgs on the mound. 48 for strikes, 27 for balls. And that's through five innings. So both pitchers look like they could go the distance. Here's the pitch. Swung through a miss. High, five, high fastball. <laughs> And it's 0-2. Can't even get it out of my mouth, right? <laughs> this is game five. So the count's 0-2. Higgs on the mound. Toes up. The windup. And the pitch. It's hit right side. And it'll be out of play. It'll stick 0-2. On deck. Behind Seaton will be the switch hitter, Ismael Sanchez. And good news. Good news for Derek Hubble. If you're still listening, here's 0-2 pitch. And it's going to be fouled off his foot. Stick 0-2. So, Derek, if you are here, and if you're not, maybe you could get someone to pick up your T-shirt. Send me your size. We have small. Here's the pitch. Popped up. It's going to be out of play 0-2. We have small, medium, or large. So if none of those are going to fit for you, get one for your kid. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's the only sizes we have. So, Derek, send me an email with the size you want. Maybe you can get someone to pick it up for you here. Here's the pitch. Ground ball out to short. Picked up from Brown. Makes a nice throw. Across the diamond to first for a 6-3. Put out for out number one. So up next will be Ismael Sanchez. So here is Higgs on the rubber. Line up, and here's the pinch. Fastball inside. Going to get the cow. It's going to be 0 1. So, Derek, you're not here. Just got your email. But you will be here in a few weeks for a conference meeting. Maybe I can reserve a shirt for you. Here's the 0-1. Found off to the screen. It's 0-2. So I'll leave that on the shoulders of the Assistant Commissioner, Sam Kneehans. So, Derek, if you want your shirt, come see Sam in the conference meeting. Here's the pitch outside for ball one. It's 1-2. One and two. But Sam will be the guy you deal with on this one. I will not be at the conference meeting. The count is one and two. Higgs on the mound to Ismael Sanchez at the plate. Said Sanchez batting from the left side, the switch hitter. And here's the one two. Misses outside for ball two. It's two and two. And here's the windup, 2-2 pitch. Fastball inside, just misses for the strikeout. He'll go full, 3-2. And, and Sanchez has a base hit. And he flew out to right field, so he is 1-2. for two. Trying to get something started with one out here for the Wildcats. Here's the pitch. Outside, just misses a little low. And that will walk Sanchez. He'll be on first base. For the second time in this game. And now comes Chase Howell to the plate. Howell is one for two. The strikeout in a single. So a little bit of trouble now. You know, as we get later in the game, later innings, and the pitch count starting to get high. That's 84 pitches now for Higgs. Here's the first one to Howell. Outside for ball one. So here's the 1-0 pitch from the mound. Taken off is Sanchez, and he'll take second. That'll be a stolen bag. The ball was dropped by Stedman, but it'll still be counted. So a stolen bag over at second, and now with one out, you got a man in scoring position at second, and Sanchez is speedy, so a single will score him for the first run in this game. 
So Chase Howe has an opportunity to do something big. And here's the 1-1 pitch. It's stroked down past third base. Here's Sanchez. The ball's out the left field. He's being coming around to go home. Here's the play. He'll slide in safe. The ball drop. And Howell will have to rip the left field off the line drive. And that'll be the first run of the game. So Sanchez will come all the way from second to score. And Howell will get the one out single. RBI single in the left field. And that will break the ice in this game. It's one to nothing. Wildcats lead in the top of the sixth inning. Left fielder Michael Brasili. So up next will be the center fielder Michael Brasili, with one out and runner on first base. So Higgs will give up the first. Run this ball game between the pitching matchup and Travis Higgs and John Woodard. So Higgs, he's still pitching well, though. He's only giving up three hits and one earn. Look down, takes his time. First pitch, and it's another single between the hole and third and short. Right past Brown. There's nothing you could do with that. That's the second straight hit. And that will do good justice right there. That will put a man on second. And now will force over Brasili on first. And on second base <laughs> is Zane Mathis. Pinch runner for Howe. Here's the f getting ready for the first pinch. Colton Kells at the plate. Man on second first. One out for the Wildcats. Here's the pitch. Outer half. Breaking ball. Get the call. And it's 0-1. So Kell taking his time. See what he can do. It's 0-1 to count to him with one out. And in this inning, there's been two hits and a run scored for Bethel. They get up in this game by one. One run, it's one to nothing. Mathis on second, on first is Michael Brasilli. Here's the pitch. Kell's going to ground out over to first, but it'll be just foul. And the count will go 0-2. So the count is 0-2 to Colton Kell at the plate, the DH, the lefty. Taking his time as Higgs. Ball behind his back. Now he comes set. Built high. Here's the pitch. Ground ball hit out to first. And he's going to be a turn over to Parker at second. And that will force out the runner, Brasili. And that will be a 3-4 put out. So scratch at Brasili. But the runner, more importantly, Mathis moves to third, and Kale will reach on the fielder's choice at first base. So that will bring up the nine-hole hitter, Taylor Patterson. And Patterson is 0 for 2 with a strikeout and ground out to second base. We have a pitcher warming up in the bullpen. And here's the first pitch. Is in there for a strike to Patterson, and it's 0-1. Getting ready. Getting ready. Here's 0-1 pitch to the plate, and it's hit. Popped up. It's going to go out to right field. Right fielder is going to come on Fenwick, and he'll make the grab for out number three. So that will strand two runners on base. And Bethel's done that a lot. But, hey, not before they get on the scoreboard and take the lead. And as it reads right now, going to the bottom of the sixth inning, Wildcats won, Barons nothing, with the Barons coming up with Brent McFarlane the lead off in the bottom half of the sixth. Stay, stick it here with us. We're listening and calling this game. We'll be right back. Wildcats lead one and nothing. You're listening to SSAC Sports Network.
Nukes. We know that for you, it's all about flavor. You want unique combinations that truly tempt your taste buds. Culinary classics that go to a whole new level. You like being served fresh takes on old favorites. All in a fun, stylish, casual place to be. All we want is to see that smile when you take your very first bite. So come see us at Nukes Eatery. Bottom of the six, it's Wildcats one, Barons nothing, but Bruton Parker will come up to the plate now with the leadoff man. The nine hole hitter, Brent McFarlane, the second baseman. He's 0 for 2. He flew out in foul territory to the catcher, Hal, in his first AB. And John Woodard still on the mound. Here's a first pitch. Fastball just misses outside for ball one. Only 67 pitches for Woodard in this game. 44 for strikes, 23 for balls. Here's the 1-0 pitch to McFarlane. Outside, he catches the corner this time. It's 1-1. One and, one. and like I said from the beginning, Woodard's numbers are a little off. You look at him, he's 3-6, 468 ERA, but this guy's got really good stuff on the mound. He can go the distance. Here's the breaking ball outside. He'll miss for 2-1. And kind of how this game is going, defensively, Bethel was playing so well as Bruton Parker is. One run could probably decide it. It will be up to the bullpen most likely. Here's the 2-1. It's popped up in the infield. And Woodard's going to come on in foul territory. Give chase, but it's going to be in the stand, so it just gets out. And the count is 2-2 two and two now to McFarlane. So McFarlane, the lefty, he's going to have to do something right here. The count's even. A double deuce is wild. Woodard's on the mound. And, you know, I've been really impressed by John Woodard today. I really think through five games, and it's saying this is counting game five today, uh, I think he's had the most solid performance so far in this game of any pitcher. Here's a 2-2. Just misses fastball outside, and that will full up the count, 3-2. and two. I really think Woodard's done the... I mean, he just, he's just he been so consistent. He hasn't thrown a lot of pitches, and he's got a lot of ground ball outs, too. Here's a 3-2. It's fouled off behind the backstop, and that probably just hit a car <laughs> out in the parking lot. I tell you about Patterson Field. You do not park close to right field or directly behind. You park as far away as you can and make the walk, or you will come out with a broken windshield. Here's a 3-2. Just gets a piece of it, fouls it off the helmet of Howell. And we'll stick it 3-2. I'm not kidding. When, uh, when when I was probably about 7 or 8, I was chasing balls out there in the parking lot. And a foul ball went up in the air, out right side of the of the stadium in the parking lot. Here's a 3-2. It's popped up in the infield. Giving chase is Ismael Sanchez over by the bag. And he'll make the catch for out number 1. So one down, and Grayson Yumans will come up. With one out. He's over two with a strikeout and a fly out to left field. So it will come up the lefty versus the righty, Woodard. But, but getting back to it, I was watching, you know, basically what we did is, you know, a bunch of the kids would just sit out there in the parking lot and chase foul balls because it's so easy to hit them in this ballpark. The first pitch is a ball up high for it's the count. One and no. So one of the balls I was chasing literally went all the way in the in right behind the car I was looking at and smashed the windshield, windshield out. Here's the 1-0 pitch outside, catches the corner for 1-1. This is a true story. <laughs> Came down, skyrocket pop-up out, out of the stadium and smashes the windshield. And ever since, every time I come here, I park far away. Here's the 1-1 pitch, swung through and missed, fastball, upper zone. And it's going to be the count, 1-2. and two. So the count is one ball, two strikes. 
One out. And here's the pitch from Woodard to the plate. And it'll be fouled off to the screen. It'll stay one and two. But, you know, what's unique about Patterson Field is that the parking lot, it's real nice to, to have a parking lot right behind the stadium within the same ground so you can kind of tailgate, kind of get that atmosphere out here. But it's a little bit different nowadays in minor league stadiums. The 1-2 is fouling off down third base. And we'll stay at 1-2. So the Wings, you know, what happened with them, they come out, move out to, I think it's somewhere in North Carolina or something. I'll have to look up the facts on that. But they move. And in came the Biscuits to Montgomery. And with that came a new stadium. Here's the 1-2 pitch. It's popped up. It's going to skyrocket and then Phil Howell is going to come back, throw his mask, and he'll make the catch behind the plate. That's the second time he's done that in this game. It's a good field awareness for Howell behind the plate for Bethel to find the ball. So it's going to be two down, and Clay Fenwick will come up to the plate. He's one for two with a single and a fly out to right field to Riddick. So he'll come up with two outs in the bottom half of the six. But after the wings left, here come the Biscuits. The new stadium is called Riverwalk Stadium. Here's the first pitch. Fastball just misses for a ball outside, and it's 1-0. But the Biscuits come here. I think this is the 12th year they've been here. So this is the 12th season. They're in the Southern League in AA. The AA fillet for the Tampa Bay Rays. Here's the breaking ball inside. It's going to be called for a strike. It's 1-1. One one. But the Biscuits... The Biscuits are starting to have a good season this year. Anyways, double A affiliate for the Rays. And Riverwalk Stadium was built 12 years ago. That's a new double A affiliate team here in Montgomery. The 1-1 one -one pitch goes outside. And it'll be 2-1. So here at Patterson Field, it's bottom half of the sixth inning. One and nothing ball game. Two outs, two ones a count, and here it is at the plate, and it's going to be a strike. Two and two, and Fenwick has a strike to work with right here. The count is even. It double deuces wild. Two outs. Here's Woodard to the plate to Fenwick, and it's hit right side. It's out in foul territory. Giving chase, he's going to get to it over his Riddick, and he'll make the catch. What a defensive effort for Riddick. A go clover out there. This guy's really got a good gloving and track down a ball. Anything out there. So that'll do it. And that'll be a foul to right field. So that will be the it through six innings of play here in game one. Your score reads Wildcats won, Barons nothing. And when we come back, it'll be West Warren to lead off for the Wildcats. We'll be right back. You're listening to SSAC Sports Network. I had a dream, a beautiful dream I couldn't believe how real it seems Up on stage, in the field of green On the winding river, on the song you'll sing When I wake up, I'll see you Here in Montgomery, where dreams come true Top of the seventh, Wildcats hold a one nothing lead. And they'll be at the plate. West Warren will lead off for the Wildcats. Still on the mound is Travis Higgs. Higgs has thrown 95 pitches, 63 for strikes, and 32 for balls. Here's the windup in the pitch. First pitch in the dirt for ball one. So in the bullpen warming up for Martin or for Bruton Parker. 
is number 35, Ben Link, 6'1 junior from Orlando, Florida. We might see him next. So here's the pitch, the 1 0. It's swung and out to short, picked up by Brown. He's not going to have a play. That'll be infield single. And right there just took a double bounce, kind of. Looks like it came maybe off a rock. I don't think the grounds watered the field before the game. <laughs> Actually, I'm positive they didn't water before the game. So a bad hop to Brown, but that will be a hit, the six hit for Bethel. So up next will be Kendall Atkinson, the shortstop. He'll bat from the right side. He's a lefty. So Warren's on first. Higgs will dig down from the stretch. Bynum is playing in. Here's the bunt attempt. He slaps it, picks up by Higgs in the mound. He's going to toss it to first. That's the only play he has as Warren was running. So he'll be on second from the sack. And Atkinson will sit down off the 1 3 put out. But there's one out and a runner in scoring position for right fielder Lucas Riddick. And if Bethel makes a run in this tournament, you'll have to give the credit offensively, defensively. Look at that category to Lucas Riddick. <laughs> this guy's been spectacular in this tournament so far. Riddick was hit by pitch, had as a single, and flew out to left so far in this game. Here's Higgs, glances at second, now makes a pitch. A bunt it's hit, miss by Riddick in zone one. It's Higgs now up to 98 pitches, 66 strikes, 32 balls. His day. This will probably be the last inning we'll see Higgs. He's got a lot of pitches on him. But, you know, you could weigh your options. How good is your bullpen? You know, do you leave your star in there for 120 pitches if he can make it through eight? I probably would. Here's a one pitch. Outside misses for a ball. It's one and one. One thing we've seen consistently in this tournament is that each team has a really good A star. The guy who starts a game is usually pretty good. He can go around five, six innings. It's been the average, but the bullpen has been really atrocious for a lot of teams in this tournament. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Swung through and miss. It's 1-2. and two. Good pitch from Higgs on the outer half. And Riddick misses. He's down the count. One, and, one ball, two strikes. Top of the seventh. One out. Runner on second base. That's Wes Warren. So here's Riddick, the lefty at the plate. Takes his time. Here's the pitch. Shatter half going to miss. Now it's two and two. And Riddick has a, he's got a unique batting stance. Digs in parallel with his feet, but his bat constantly moving up and down motion. Bounces right off the top of his left shoulder. So swinging the back, back and forth. Here's Higgs on the mound. Makes a pitch for the Barons. And it's fouled off behind the plate. It'll be two and two. Stedman's gonna come out and walk the ball out to Higgs, talk with his pitcher a little bit. That's gonna be pitch number 101. 101 is the total pitch count. 67 strikes, 34 balls. So he's over the 100 pitch limit. You might as well see how much can you waste Higgs. Get as much as you can out of him because he won't pitch again this tournament. So on the mound, he digs down from the stretch, ball behind back, glove up to his mouth. Now he comes out, belt high. Here's the pitch. Fastball, it's popped up in there, out to center, going back is Yeomans. He'll come back, make the catch, tagging on seconds one. He's going to make the run over to third. He'll slide in safe, and the throw will come to buy him over at third base. So of two outs, a sack for Riddick. And that's going to put Warren on third. And at the play will be first base and Sam Seaton. Seaton on the day had a tough day. He flew out to center twice to Yummins and grounded out to short to Brown. So he's 0 for 3. He'll come up with Ismael Sanchez on deck waiting. So Seaton digs in. Higgs is I guess potentially one pitch away from being out of his jam. Here it is. Up high, fastball, misses, ball one. So the count is 1-0.
Higgs on the mound. He's nothing to be upset about. He's pitched well today. Here's the pitch. 1-0. And it's stroked up the middle for a two-out RBI single. And that's going to score Warren. He'll come around and score. The score is now 2 to nothing. And two outs here in the top of the seventh inning. Wildcats add one more. Seaton will be on first base. And Warren will come in to score. And that will bring up Ismael Sanchez with two outs, a switch hitter. And that's probably going to do it. He's got 104 pitches on the day. And there is the skipper out there. He's going to come talk to him. That's Greg Mullins. Kind of try to talk it over. Trying to see how much is left in the tank for Higgs. Does he have enough? Does he not? Trying to convince him. I think he's going to convince him that he'll have enough. He only needs one more out to pitch seven innings. He's pitched six and two-thirds. And he did just that, so Skipper Mullins is going to walk back. He's convinced him that he can do it. So of two outs, Ismael Sanchez will come up to the plate, the switch hitter. Runners on first base is Sam Seaton. He had the RBI two-out single up the middle to score one to make it 2 nothing. Here's the first pitch. Ground ball is hit out to first. It'll be picked up by Parker, and he'll just tag on first base, and that'll do it. So... The Wildcats will leave one on first, but not before they push Warren across with the Sam Seaton two out single up the inning, right up the middle, to make it two to nothing. So the score after the top of the seventh inning as we go to the bottom half of the seventh is two to nothing. Wildcats lead when we return. You're listening to the SSAC Sports Network. We know that it's all about flavor. You want unique combinations that truly tempt your taste buds. Culinary classics that go to a whole new level. You like being served fresh takes on old favorites. All in a fun, stylish, casual place to be. All we want is to see that smile when you take your very first bite. So come see us at Nuke's Eatery. Bottom of the seventh, two to nothing. Wildcats lead over Bruton Parker, the Barons. Up to the plates, Mike Parker, the first baseman. He's one for two, the double and a strikeout. And here is John Woodard, first pitch, fastball, too low outside for ball one. So it's one and zero oh the count. And Parker at the plate on the season, he has seven bombs. They could use one right here. Here's the one zero -oh pitch, fastball up high. And this is again, it's 2 0. So Cody Owen will check back in to play center field. The 2 0 pitch goes out, it'll be 3 0. So Owen will check back in. We'll let you know the defensive alignments in a second. Here's the 3 0 pitch. Strike. It's 3 and 1 to Parker. So Brasili will go back to left. Patterson will come out. And Owen will check back in. So Owen's in center. We'll tell you the whole defensive alignment right for this. The 3 1. It's swung away and fouled off out of play. It'll be 3 and 2. 
So from left to right, it's Priscilla, Owen Riddick from third to first, Sanchez, Atkinson, Warren, and Seaton behind the plate, Howell, and Woodard on the mound. That's your defensive alignment for Bethel. And here's a 3-2 pitch. And he just misses outside. That'll be a 3-2 walk for the leadoff man. So Mike Parker's on first, just like that. So the tying run comes up to the plate with Brett's, Brett Stedman. Stedman has had a tough day. He's 0 for 2, struck out, flew out to left field. Came in the game batting. Batting 347. On the year, he's got 20 runs batted in. And Rusty Thompson, the skipper, is going to come out and talk to his guy, John Woodard. There's a little bit of life and action in the Wildcat bullpen. So Woodard right now is at 91 pitches, 59 strikes, and 32 balls thrown. Starting to get up there. And Woodard's had such an exceptional day, only given up two hits. Bethel has gone on to score two runs off seven hits. 15. And warming up for Bethel in the bullpen is right-hander Nolan Smith, the 5'9 junior from Parsons, Tennessee. So maybe we'll see him next. But that's if John Woodard can't get out of this. So no outs, he gives a leadoff walk to Mike Parker. And that's not a bad walk, though. That's to the power, the big... The big, tall, explosive power hitter for Parker. And he's not too fast on the on the bases either, so not really that bad of a walk when you look at it. So here's Stedman at the plate. And the first pitch in the dirt. Breaking ball, it's 1-0. Atkinson and Warren playing a little bit deeper in double play depth. Playing even on the base. Sanchez at third and holding the runner on and seating it first. So coming set on the mound is Woodard. Here it is. It's popped up out to short. Atkinson going back. He's backtracking, backtracking. He's going to get it. He's going to catch it. Almost falls backwards. And Owens trying to call him off, but he didn't hear. But regardless, he'll get the out. So one down with one on. And Brandon Bynum, the third baseman, will come up. He's 0 for 2, struck out his last. And his first, he grounded out to Atkinson at short. Bynum's got a lot of power, too. Second on his team in home runs with three. Has 15 runs batted in. Could tie it up with one swing. Here's the first pitch. Outer half. Misses with a fastball. It's 1-0. Game two will, will be will feature number eight, Bellhaven. Number four, Martin Methodist. That'll start at 1 p.m. first pitch. Scheduled time. I'll let you know the actual time. Here's the second pitch in the dirt for ball two. So 2 0 is a count, bottom of the seventh inning. Two to nothing, Wildcats lead. John Woodard on the mound. And he comes set, takes a glance at first. Here's the pitch. Outside misses. And three straight pitches, three straight balls. Howell's going to kind of come out and say a few words to him, not trot back to behind the plate. So the count's 3 0 with one out. John Woodard is going to have to bear down. Here's the 3-0 pitch outside, but he misses, and that will be two consecutive walks. Not two consecutive. It was Stedman out, but it will be two walks, so that will put Parker on second and Bynum on first. And up to the play will be Levi Osteen, the DH. So bottom on first, doesn't have wheels. So you can turn a double play right there, but it's going to be tough to the lefty Osteen. Woodard comes set. There's one out. Here's the pitch. Fastball inside. He's going to miss. It's 1-0. So four consecutive balls have been thrown for Woodard, and maybe the gas have run out of the tank. Taking his time on the mound. Comes set from the stretch. 
looks on, gets a call. Here's a pitch. Fastball is going to paint the outside corner. And after four straight balls, he'll finally get the strike. It's one and one. On deck is Dylan Gay, the left fielder. So Steen digs in. The lefty, it's one and one the count. Runner on second and first with one out. Barons are threatening right now. Here's Woodard. Comes to the plate, the pitch. Swung through and miss in the dirt. Good breaking ball. And it'll be a count one and two. How about this stat right here? Bethel is batting 269 in the game. Bruton Parker, 095. Hard to win when you bat under 100 in a game. Here's a 1 2 in the dirt. Trying him a chase. He'll be 2 and 2. But hey, you know, good pitching beats good hitting every time. And the Barons, you know, th this team can hit. They've got guys you can stroke. But John Woodard's really set him down to up to this point where he's fell in a little bit of trouble with two walks here in the bottom half of the seventh inning. The 2 2. Swung through, ground ball up the middle, picked up, flipped from. Warren out to short, and that'll get one. The runner's going to come around third. Parker's going to score off the throw over, trying to turn the double play. And we'll see if they score that in error. Basically, Warren flipped it up to Atkinson. He made the throw over to first to Seaton, and the ball was dropped and got, got away from, which was a result. The runner scored. So Parker will come in to score. Bynum will be scratched out at second, and Osteen will make it. Off a fielder's choice on first base. They will score that in error. So that's going to be a throw in error on Atkinson. So up next will be Dylan Gay. So Day will come up. And here it is. First pitch swung through and missed. Gay's down 0 1. So two outs. Your score is 2 to 1. Woodard still set up for the W in this game if he can get this final out right here. He's probably done after the day. He has 103 pitches total, and he's thrown. Here's the breaking ball. 0-1 just misses. They're going to get him a go. Yes, they're going to say it is, and it's 0-2. So Woodard, if he can come straight at him, he'll get out of this bottom half of the seven. He'll have to pitch seven innings, giving up one hit off two, or one run off two hits. Time will be called by Gay at the plate. Gay's over two, struck out and flew out to second base to Warren. Comes set on the mound, glances at first. Here's the pitch, breaking ball, fouled on the third base side, and we'll do it again. It's 0 2. This tournament overall, this, this has probably been the Closest pitching duel all the way through, and we're in the seventh inning. And if Water can get done, that will be both starting pitchers when have pitch seven innings. So here's the 0-2 pitch to the plate to Howell. Swung through and miss, and that will be another strikeout. Strikeout number nine on the day. And he gets out of a jam, so that's good news for John Woodard and the Wildcats. So we're done through seven innings here in game number one. Uh, four today in, in round number two. And your score is two to one. Wildcats lead over the Barons by one run. And to come to lead off will be Chase Howell, the catcher for Bethel in return. Wildcats lead by one, two to one. We'll be right back. Listen to SSAC Sports Network. I had a dream, a beautiful dream. I couldn't believe how real it seems. Up on stage. Feel of green on the winding river on the song you sing when I wake up I'll see you here in Montgomery where dreams come true I had a dream how beautiful
Top of the eighth inning. And the day is done for starter Travis Hicks. He goes seven innings, gives up seven hits, two runs, two earned, walks two, and strikes out four batters. And that'll be the day for Higgs. So a new pitcher in will be Ben Link. The righty six foot one junior from Orlando, Florida. And here's a little bit back little background on Ben Link. 568 ERA. He's 0-1 making his eighth appearance on the air. He's only pitched 12 and two thirds. And he's given up a few things. Giving up 15 hits through it. Not not too bad. Not ERA, but the righty will come in. In a spot where he needs to keep the Wildcats scoreless right here and to have his team, each team with six more outs together and see if they can extend those three outs a little bit longer. So up two to one is Bethel and Chase Howell will come in for the first time to face Ben Link. So it's a Roddy on Roddy matchup. Link will dangle his right arm. Now comes set at the chest. And here's the pitch. Fastball, a little bit too low outside. And that will be ball one. It counts 1-0 to Howell. Here's a pitch. Outside. Fastball strike. It's 1-1. One one. Howell has done well. Two singles. Has an RBI. and He struck out one, so he's 2-3. for three. Here's the pitch. Fouled off. And it's going to be 1-2. So one ball, two strikes. Howell's down in the count. He's got to protect the plate for the Wildcats. Here's Link. The stretch, the pinch outside. He almost went, but he doesn't. And it's two and two. Coming set on the mound. Chest high. Here's a two-two pitch. It's fouled off behind the plate. Into the stands, it's two and two. And this is just game one. Remember, the winner of this will move on. And they'll play the winner of number one AUM and number five Mobile. That game will be the late one tonight at 7 p.m. The 2 2 pitch. It's rocketed out to center field. It's going to fall right in front of Yeomans. And that'll be a leadoff single for Chase Howell. That's his third single of the game. And he's on first with no outs and Michael Brasilli coming up to the plate. So Brasilli will come up. He has get on base from a fielder's choice. Has a single. And Zane Mathis will pinch run for Howell. Here's the pitch. Fastball outside. Here's the throw from the catcher, Stedman. And it won't be in time. He'll slide back safe is Mathis. So Mathis pinch running for how Brasilli at, at the plate, the righty for Wildcats. Mind you, everybody's just playing one game today. Tomorrow's a different. Could be a little bit different. We'll see. So here's the 1-0 count. Link looks on. Here's the pinch. Try to bunt at but brought it back. It was a ball. And it's 2-0 to Brasilli. Two teams might have to, a few teams might have to play two games tomorrow. That's depending. Two teams will have to play two games tomorrow. That's going to be where you're at in the bracket. And that depends if you play two tomorrow. But today, you have to keep winning to play. Loser of this game is out of the tournament. Here's the pitch. Far and outside. It's ball three. So, Link has given up a leadoff single. And he's been pitching around. He's thrown now nine pitches. Five for balls and four for strikes. Three zero pitch. Takes a look at first. And here it is. It's going to be four straight pitches for balls. And that's going to walk Brasilia on the first. So Mathis will take on second. Up next will be Colton Kell. He'll come back up with another opportunity. He's had a few of them in this game to hit runners across into the fielder's choice. His last A.B. He's walked and struck out 
in this game. So he's one for three in this game. Excuse me, 0 for 3 in this game is Kale. So he'll dig in the lefty versus the righty, Link. He'll dangle his right arm. Comes set now, runner on second, glances. Here's the first pinch. Fastball inside, strike one, it's 0 and 1. So no balls, one strike to Kale. A lot of good pitching in this game. Eight hits for Bethel now. They've scored two runs, trying to get that run back that they gave up. In the bottom half of the seventh. Here's the link. He looks on. Now he gets a call. Here's the pitch. Outer half. Doesn't get the fastball to hit. And it's one and one. Best thing Ben Link could do. There's action in the bullpen. For the Barons. His form just to, If he can get out of this inning. His day will probably be done. Only pitching one inning. So he'll come set. First baseman playing in front of the runner. Here's the pitch. Swung. Hit up the middle. That'll be a single. Runner's going to come around. That's Mathis. Here's the throw at the plate. He'll slide in. Safe. It'll be a no out. Single up the middle. And that's going to score a run. So Kale will get on the scoreboard with a his first hit of the day. That'll score Mathis from second. Move Vasily to second as well. And Kale will be on first. Your score is 3-1 with no outs here comes Cody Owen. So Owen will finally get his first A-B of the day. He'll dig in. He, he started the game out in center and was later subbed out for Taylor Patterson. Now check back in. So here's the pitch. Bunted at but pulled back. He'll miss for a ball. It's 1-0. So Bethel trying to close this one out. And it's been such a tight game up and down. Pitching wise, that runs have really been scarce. It's been really hard to move a guy past second base in this game. So the 1 0 pitch to the plane. Outside's going to cut the corner. And that'll be a strike. It's 1 and 1. So Owen at the plate. Looking's being patient. Gets a call from Skipper Rusty Thompson at third over in the coach's banners box. Won't be surprised to see a little small ball right here. Big lead over at first base for Kell. Here's the pitch. Try to bunt out. He does, and it's foul. So it'll be one and two. And honestly, I cannot describe how difficult it's been in this tournament to lay down a bunt with runners on runners on base. It's, it's been so difficult. Now, with runners off, we've had a few single bunts that went for hits in this game. Darius Reese for AUM was the last one to do it last night. That was a late game. But a few guys have done it. Here's the pitch, the 1 2. It's bunted at, and it's going to be in play. Here's the throw to first in the dirt by pick by Parker. And that's going to be a 2 3 put out for out number one. So a gutsy call with 1 2 to give him the bunt sign. He gets it down, though, and Owen will be retired. The sack to move over some guys. So that will put Brasilia on third and Kale on second. And here's Wes Warren, the leadoff man. Had a single his last A.B. Later scored. He was the second run to come across to make it 2-1. Or 2 to nothing. So he scores 3-1, to one, one out. Runner on third and second for Bethel. At the plate, it's Wes Warren, the leadoff man. Did singles last A.B. And here's Ben Link on the mound. The first pinch, fastball out of half for strike one. We said it started that it was going to be a battle of the bullpens, really, because both starting pitchers really pitch well, pitch effective. But so far in this tournament, we've seen great starting pitching, and we've seen some really bad bullpen pitching. Here's the pitch. Swung through and miss. It's 0-2. Nice breaking ball in the outer half. And Warren went golfing. So the decision to either leave Woodard in there or go to the bullpen will be on Rusty Thompson's mind after this half inning. Here's the pitch. It's hit out to center field. It looks like it's going to fall, and it will in right center. That'll score one run, and he'll hold up the other on third. 
So Brasilia will come in to score, and Kale will move to third. And that's going to be a single for Warren with one out. And up next will be Kendall Atkinson. And that might be it for Ben Link. Skipper Greg Mullins is trotting out there. Look like he's going to switch pitchers. And Link's come in and did nothing really but struggle. He's given up two runs to make it 4-1. They'll have six outs left coming back here in the bottom half of the eighth to at least tie it or take the lead. So we'll see how this works. They're taking a lot of time. Home plate Blue's going to have to go out there and speed it up as rightfully he should. It's not going to be a therapy session on the mound, just a little chat. So they'll talk it over and leave Lincoln there. So Mullins will walk back to his respective dugout. And up to the plate will be Atkinson, the shortstop. He's 0 for on the day. 0 for 4. He struggled a lot at the plate, but right here, he could hit a ball to the right side. Even if stay in the infield, it's going to be a tough play for McFarlane or Parker to try to throw out the runner on third, which is Kale. But Kale's on third. On first is Warren. So Link will dangle his arm. Now he comes set, chest high from the stretch. Here's a pitch. Fastball up high, misses outside for ball one. Link's thrown 21 pitches, 12 for 13 for strikes, and 8 for balls. He's been hit around, though, in this inning. Get him three hits, two runs. Here's the pitch. Misses again outside, ball two. So it's 2-0. This inning's starting to drag out a little bit. Bethel doing a good job to work the count. That's what you got to do with good pitching. They're doing a good job today at working the count. So 2-0. Here's the pitch. Outside. Misses again. It's 3-0. And Link looks a little disgusted on the mound. Looks like he thought that was going to be a strike. It was close. But the, <laughs> but the strike zone... Is pretty scarce today. It's pretty thin. Here's a 3 0 pitch. Fastball in there for strike one. It's 3 and 1. So three balls, one strike. One out. Runner on third and first for Bethel. Top of the eighth inning. They've scored two runs to make it 4 1. Their lead is by three. And here's a 3 1 pitch. Swung. Ground ball out to short, but he's going to second. He'll get past Brown. It'll be a base hit. And the runner's coming all the way from first. To go to third, that's Kell, and he'll make it there. See if Kell will score. The runner on first is Warren, the speedy Warren. He'll make it to third. So Kell will score on the single past the shortstop, Brown. That's just going to extend the lead. It's 5-1 now, and that will most likely do it for Link. So he comes in, only pitches one-third of an inning, and he'll come out. So we'll take a quick break and come in and tell you who the new pitcher is. For the Barons, your score is 5-1. to one. Bethel over the lead with a runner on third and first. We'll return. Your score is Wildcats 5, Bears 1. You're listening to SSAC Sports Network. We know that for you, it's all about flavor. You want unique combinations that truly tempt your taste buds. Culinary classics that go to a whole new level. You like being served fresh takes on old favorites. All in a fun, stylish, casual place to be. All we want is to see that smile when you take your very first bite. So come see us at Nuke's Eatery.
So coming in is a new pitcher. We'll let you know when we figure it out. The first pitch is Bonnet. He gets past the pitcher, and a run will come in to score. That'll be an infield single with the bunt. And that was Riddick. Happened so quick, we didn't get the name out. So that's going to score Warren. That will make it 6-1. to one. Move back and soon to second. That will be a bunt single in field. And I'll bring up Sam Seaton, the first baseman. And basically what's happening here, new pitchers came in for Bruton Parker. And he is not listed on any roster. But his number is 39, so we'll call him 3-9. Running on second first. Here's the first pitch. Breaking ball out or half for strike one. We'll just call him lefty. It's he's a lefty. We we can describe what he is. Oh, one's the count. Looks on at the at deck is Seaton. He's at the plate. Here's the pinch. Fastball. It's hit. Popped up in the infield over to Parker at first. He'll call off the second baseman. He'll make the catch. So Seaton will fly out to the first base. Up next will be Ismail Sanchez with a runner on second and first. Atkinson's at second. Riddick's on first. And I'm not kidding you. Absolutely unbelievable. This guy pitching now for the Barons is not on any rosters. He's not on the official stat website for deck stats. So I'm absolutely clueless right now to tell you who's on the mound. Really, I guess I guess technically he could be a guy you just pick up off a travel ball team and put in. And we figured it out. It's Christian Bragg. That's a different number on the roster. So 39, Christian Bragg, the lefty. Here's the pitch. And he'll be in there for a strike. It's 0-1 to Sanchez. So Christian Bragg, the lefty, is in there. We'll give you some stats on him in a second. Here's the 0-1. Two outs. Here's the pitch. Breaking ball. It's fouled off right side. It's 0-2 to Sanchez. And Bragg has a 5.46 ERA on the season. He's 0-2. He's making his 11th appearance on the season. 28 innings pitched. He's given up 45 hits. And he struck out only 8. So the count is 0-2 looking for strikeout number 9 here. With two outs. Bragg on the mound. Comes set. The lefty to the righty. Here's the pitch. Outer half. Almost gets him, but he misses. It's 1-2. and two. So Sanchez, a switch hitter, moves to the right side. This is his first at bat from that side. Technically left side, but the righty, left side box. So it's 1-2 to count with two outs. Runner on second and first. On second is Atkinson. Riddick is on first base. Here's the 1-2. Misses far and outside with a breaking ball. It's 2-2. Two and two. So it's two balls, two strikes with two outs. Bragg's in a little bit of trouble right here. He could get out with one pitch. Scoring four runs here in the top of the eighth to make it 6-1 is Bethel. Here's Bragg taking his time. Fires and kicks. A little bit low with the fastball. It's full with 3-2. On deck, if it came to, it would be the catcher, Chase Howell. He led off this inning. So that just tells you how it's went for Bruton Parker. So it's 3-2 is the count. Three balls, two strikes, two outs. Coming set is Bragg. Here's a pitch. Inside. Fouled off out of play. And we'll do it again. Runners are running on that. So a tough look at it. We finally found the mystery man on the mound. <laughs> it's actually number 15 off the roster. And he just found a new jersey today, I guess. He's number 39. So Bragg is on the mound. Looks on. Gets a call from Stedman. And here's the 3-2. Inside, breaking ball, and Sanchez will swing through and strike out. So that's the final out of this long inning here in the top of the eighth inning. And so the Wildcats will capitalize. They'll score four runs 
to make the lead and extend it to five. Your score is Wildcats six, Barons one will return to the bottom half of the eighth inning. You're listening to the SSAC Sports Network. I had a dream, a beautiful dream. I couldn't believe how real it seems. Up on stage in the field of green, on the winding river, when the sun you'll sing. When I wake up, I'll see you, you in Montgomery, where dreams come true. So a pinch hitter will come in. It'll be 26. We'll let you know who that is. He'll come in and pinch hit for Justin Brown. Up at the plate is Brian De Brian Donnelly. Against the righty, still in the mountains. Woodard, the first pitch is a ball. So Donnelly's in there. Pinch hitting for Brown. Trying to get something going here. They need a run, a base runner. Here's the second pitch. And it misses. It's now 2-0. So two balls, no strikes to Brian Donnelly. And on deck is McFarlane. And here's the 2-0 pitch to the plate. Up high, misses. It's 3-0. And I understand Bethel trying to save some arms, but it really looks like Woodard is, it looks like he just doesn't have any more left. He barely got that last inning, only giving up one run. But he got a five-run lead here. Trying to finish it. Here's the pitch. Fastball out or half. Three and one. Someone's warming up for Beth. We'll let you know. After this, the three one pitch. It's fouled off. Now it's three and two. Blake Chandler is warming up in the bullpen for the Wildcats. He could come in any time. How about this stat? Bruton Parker on the game is hitting 087. That's tough. Here's a 3-2. Fastball swung through and miss. And he'll take a seat. That'll be strikeout. Another one on the day. That'll be strikeout number 10. And Brian Donnelly will sit down. So out number one here in the bottom half of the eighth inning. And Brent McFarlane will come off for the second batter in the inning with one out. 10 Ks. This has been probably the best pitching performance in the tournament. Here's the first pitch. Strike on that or half. It's 0-1. Not probably. There's no doubt. If Woodard somehow, maybe he just pitches 8. But if he pitches a complete game right here, it'll be tough to beat this performance. Here's the second pitch. It's inside. He'll nip the corner. It's 0-2. So it's 0-2 with one out to the lefty McFarlane. And John Woodard's working. Here's the pitch, though, too. Fastball, it's swung on and hit left side. And he'll go in the foul territory and bounce into the bullpen. He'll stick 0-2. So only two hits and one run for Bruton Parker on the day. It's been a tough day offensively against John Woodard. Here's the windup. And the pitch, though, too. Up high, fastball. It's one and two. Woodard has thrown 
72 strikes and 43 balls. He's up to 115 pitches on the day. Comes through. Here's a pitch to the plate. It's popped up in the infield. Woodard right on top of the mound is going to catch it. He'll back up and make the catch. but fall down from behind. And the big man's going to get some help from his infield. He'll get back up. That'll be out number two. So, it'll be Grayson, Grayson Yeomans coming up to the plate. So, Yeomans has an opportunity. Yeomans does at the plate to get some going two outs for Bruton Parker. But John Woodard, Woodard looks like he's just cruising at this point. Has been kind of sporadic with his pitches, taking a little bit longer time on the mound to make them. And here's the first pitch. Fastball, it's fouled off left side, out of play, it's 0-1. one's the count, two outs here. Yeoman's at the plate, here's the pitch. Inside, strike for strike number two, it's 0-2. So now Bruton Parker down to 080 hitting in this game. Here's 0-2 look. Fastball swung through and missed. Strikeout number 11 on the day through eight innings of work for John Woodard. This guy has been spectacular. He has thrown 118 pitches, 75 for strikes, and 43 for balls, and that'll do it for eight innings of play. Your score is Wildcat 6. And Barron's one will return. You're listening to SSAC Sports Network. At Nukes, we know that for you, it's all about flavor. You want unique combinations that truly tempt your taste buds. Culinary classics that go to a whole new level. You like being served fresh takes on old favorites. All in a fun, stylish, casual place to be. All we want is to see that smile when you take your very first bite. So come see us at Nuke's Eatery. It's up to play. It's Chase Howe. Into the game is Logan Barber now pitching for Bruton Parker. Barber the righty, 5'11", senior from Florida. So he'll come up. Barber's style in the year. Here's the first pitch. It's hit on high. Fly ball to left field. Coming on. It's going to fall between the shortstop and the left fielder. So falls between Gay and Brown. And that will be a leadoff single. <laughs> Zane Mathis will come on and pinch run for Hal. And up now will be Michael Brasilli. <laughs> Brasilli at the plate now. Here's the pitch, outer half, fastball, strike one. So it's 0-1 on the season for Barber. So 
So for Lane Barber in the season, second pitch, wild pitch, gets away from Stedman. Here's a throw at second. It'll slide in safe. And Mathis will take it off the wild pitch. But for Lane Barber on the season, he is 643 ERA, own one, making his sixth appearance. Runner on second. Here's the pitch in the dirt, blocked up by Stedman, and the count will go two and one. So Kell is on deck. Brasili's at the play for Bethel, trying to add some insurance runs here. No outs. Uh, runner on second. Coming set is Barber, and here's the pitch. It's stroked out to center. That ball is going back, 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 and it's going to be over the head of Yummins, and it'll come off the left center wall. One run's going to come in a score, going for a triple. He's going to go in there and be a stand-up triple of no outs with an RBI out to left center. So a stroke pitch from Brasili. He goes all the way for a triple, and that's going to score Mathis easily from second, and that's going to make it 7-1. to one. So this game is... Pushing close, it's going to be tough. When you're talking about trying to come back from this, you've only had two hits all day if you're Bruton Parker. Been a rough day at the plate, and now you're down by six runs again. Fourteen hits on the day for Bethel, and Colton Kale will come to the plate with no outs. And Brasili on third base. So here's Barber. He'll come set from the stretch. Off the rubber. Towed up far right side. Come set the pitch. And it's swung and hit up in the air. In the infield for a pop-up. Looks like Brown to get up under. But it's going to let him drop. And he couldn't find it in the sun. And the run will come in to score. See how they score that? It's going to have to be a hit. And that's going to be a that's going to be a straight up hit. So that will put Kell on first with an RBI single. That will score Brasili, and the score is now eight to one. Wildcats lead by seven runs. And at the plate is Cody Owen. Here's the throw to first, just to check him up, and he'll toss it back. So Owen will dig in. So Barber's thrown six pitches. Here's the first one to Owen. He'll go in there for a strike on the outside corner. It's 0-1. So game two will let you know that matchup right there. Stands are starting to foul in a little bit. Be between number eight, Bellhaven, and number four, Martin Methodist. Here's the 0-1 pitch in the dirt for a ball. It is 1-1. One So Barber's the fourth pitcher today for the Barons. That's unfortunate. Travis Hicks pitched so well. He pitched seven innings. Here's a pickoff to throw to first, not in time. But Higgs, he threw seven innings. He had seven hits and just two runs, walked two, and just four strikeouts. So he really put his team in a position to win. Here's the pitch. The 1-1 one -one falls a little low. It's 2-1. and one. And it's really it's going to come down to pitching in this tournament. How deep is your bullpen? Do you have a guy that you can go to that can come out and get you two or three innings in a few games? Here's another pickoff, and he'll slide in safe. That's Kell over first, and Owen at the plate. Barber's on the mound. The two-one count. Here's the pitch. Fastball out or half. He'll be for a strike. It's down two and two. So the count's two and two. Here's the pitch. Breaking ball. It's popped up in the infield. Parker giving chase in foul territory. He's going to come on and make the grab over in front of the Bethel dugout. And that will be out number one. So Owen will, be, will sit down. Up three if you're keeping a book. And up next will be Wes Warren, the leadoff man. So Warren will dig in with one out. 
Warren's had two consecutive singles back in the seventh and eighth inning. Now we'll come up for the third consecutive time in three consecutive innings. So Barber comes set from the stretch. Here's the pitch. Breaking ball, pie misses, ball one. Bethel's turned their day around hitting wise. They're now batting 405. So they had to do what they had to do to come back in this game, and they've really turned on the Jets offensively. It's a pickoff throw to first. We'll miss. Here's the pitch to the plate, and it's fouled off. I think the count one and one. So one at the plate. It's one and one. One ball, one strike, one out. Runner first is Kell. Here's a pitch from Barber. Breaking ball never breaks. It'll be two and one. Scoreboard says three and one. And the up says two and one. I wonder who's right. Uh, here's the two one pitch. Comes to the plate. Up high inside, it'll be three and one. So the scoreboard operator finally got his wish. It's three balls, one strike. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to have a little fun with it. Here's Warren at the plate, the three one, the hitters count. Makes another pickoff throw. And right now Barber's really worried about Kelwer at first. This game's pretty close to out of reach. Seven runs when you're batting. 077. So it's going to be hard for him to come back. Here's the pitch at the plate. Misses. And here's the one out walk. It's going to put Warren on first base and bring Kendall Atkinson up to the plate. So that will move Colton Kell to second on first is Warren. And Atkinson is now at the plate for Bethel. And that might be another pitching change. Greg Mullins is coming out, the skipper, for a Bruton Parker. Talking it over his pitcher right now. So it looks like they might be making a change. And they will. So we'll take a break and let you know who it is. With one out, there's runner on second or first for Bethel, and your score is eight to one. Wildcats lead by seven. We'll be right back right after this. You're listening to the SSAC Sports Network. I had a dream, a beautiful dream. I couldn't believe how real it seems. Up on stage in the field of green on the winding river. When the song you sing, when I wake up, I'll see you. Coming in to pitch will be Lane Barber. Could be the brother of Logan Barber. Not too sure on that. Someone could clarify that. Send me an email. I'll we'll let you know. So Lane will come in the lefty, six foot sophomore from Palaka, Florida. So he'll come in with one out. 
And a runner on second and first, and he's going to face Kendall Atkinson, the shortstop. He'll bat from the right side for the lefty. Six pitcher of the day for the Barons. The first pitch hits the outside corner for a strike one. On deck is Lucas Riddick. And now it's 15 hits on the scoreboard for Bethel. Here's the pitch. Outer half, strike two. So 0-2. And, and this game was, was so cutthroat, so close through six innings. It was 1-0 after six. It was 2-1 after seven. Here's the pitch. Ground ball out to first. And it'll be foul, so it'll stick 0-2 with one out. But the past two innings... A bunch of hits. I've lost count how many hits it's been in the past two. If I had to say it's been around eight or nine hits, it seems like. Here's the breaking ball up high, misses, and it's one and two. So only two hits, the two lone hits for the Barons. And right now, just a lot of pitching mistakes for them on the day. Here's the pitch. Fastball outside. That's going to KO Atkinson. He'll take a seat for out number two. So up next will be Lucas Riddick with a runner on second and first. Has an RBI opportunity right here. Right fielder, Lucas Riddick. Three more runs, if it was to happen, would be a run roll limit here in the top of the ninth. So here comes the plate. Riddick has two singles on the day. First pitch is a strike on that or half. Hit by pitch, had a single, flew out to left, flew out to center. That was a sack, though, and had a single in his last at, at bat in the eighth inning. So here's Riddick in the pitch. He swings, ground ball out to first, picked up from Parker. He's not going to have to play, not going to get in time to throw his pass to pitcher, and a run will come in to score. That will be Kale. And Warren's going to move all the way to third. The runner will advance. That will be an infield hit. He'll advance off the air. That's a throw and air on the first baseman. And so Lane Barber thought he's going to get out of it, but the throwing error from Parker from first. He's going to put a runner on third and second. And up the plate is Sam Seaton. Here's the pitch. And he hits one right up the middle. That's going to score one. And here's the run. Another one's going to come in. And he'll score. And that looks like it's going to push it up a little bit. So Warren will score. And Riddick will score. Seaton will be on first base. And that will bring Ismael Sanchez. The switch hitter. He'll hit from the left side this time. So the Ronnie will come up, the switch hitter. Hit from the left box, the right side technically. Here's the pitch, and it's rolled right up past the middle, past the diving Brown. And with two outs, it's going to get past the center fielder, but he'll pick it up, Yeomans. And with two outs, that'll be a two-out single for Sanchez. Is that the right score, 11-1? Chase so Chase Howell will come up now. Seaton's on second. Sanchez is on first. Scores 11 to 1. Here's a foul ball down the side. And here's Barber comes set. 0-1's the count to Howell. Second pitch is going to miss, so it'll be ball one. His score is 11-1. 11 runs off 17 hits. I'll have to have clarification about the run roll limit here. 
And here's a pitch. It's stroke out to center field, and it's going to fall. And they're going to hold up the runners, so the bases will be loaded with two outs. And another single. Howell will be on first. Moving to third to Seaton. Sanchez will go to second. Mathis will come in for Howell on first base, and Michael Brasilli will come up to the plate. So Howell's had three straight singles. Listen to this on the day. Howell is five for six with five singles and two scored runs. So Brasilli will come up with two outs, bases loaded top of the ninth inning. Here's the pitch in the dirt for ball one. So Bethel really pushing this game out. And I'll have to talk to someone about the official rules. I wasn't clear on it. And here's the pitch. It's going to be a strike, so it's one and one. Here's a pitch. Hit right side. And it's going to go to right field. A run will come into school. <laughs> so a runner will come into score. Seaton will come into score. Sanchez will go to third. Second will be Mathis. And Brasilia on first with a single. Scores 12 to 1. The plate is Kale. Here's the pitch. Fly ball out to center, left center. And it's going to be caught in left field by Gay. And that will do it for this long top of the ninth inning. Your score reads 12 to 1. And it appears there will be one more chance in the bottom half of the ninth inning for Bruton Parker to come back. They'll have to score 11 to at least tie it up to play extras. So. Wildcats lead by 11, 12 to 1 return. You listen to the SSAC Sports Network. At Nukes, we know that for you, it's all about flavor. You want unique combinations that truly tempt your taste buds. Culinary classics that go to a whole new level. You like being served fresh takes on old favorites. All in a fun, stylish, casual place to be. All we want is to see that smile when you take your very first bite. So come see us at Nuke's Eatery. So here's the bottom of the ninth inning. First pitch is roped out to left field for out number one. That was Clay Fenwick. Came back a little late, so Fenwick will fly out to left. Still on the mound is Woodard. So it'll be first out and F7. Up next will be Mike Parker. Here's the first pitch to Parker, and it'll be in there. Strike one on the corner. It's 0-1. Here's Woodard. Makes another pitch. Breaking ball. Swung through and miss again, and it's 0-2. Here's 0-2, ground ball to first. He'll stay in play. Looks like not. It's gonna, just going to go foul. So he'll stay 0-2. One out, bottom of the ninth inning. It's 12-1. Wildcats lead by 11. 
And Woodard on the day. He's thrown 123 pitches, 80 for strikes, 43 for balls. He's going to get the win in this matchup. Here's the 0-2 pitch to the plate. And fouling off from Parker, he'll stay 0-2. O two is the count. Woodard on the mound, and here he comes. The windup in the pitch, fastball out of half, and he's going to strike out. Looking, Parker will sit down, and that's strikeout number twelve on the day for John Woodard. What a performance for this guy on the mound for Bethel. They needed a big, big day starter for Woodard, and he's come through in the clutch. So Brett Stedman, the catcher, will come out for the last hope and last opportunity for the Barons. First pitch is outside for ball one. One of the count. It's ripped out to center field. Going back is Owen. He'll come up at the track and he'll make the catch. And that'll do. That'll be the final here. It's going to be 12 to 1. Bethel will move on in the loser's bracket. And good job by them. They'll play the loser of game seven. That'll be between Faulkner and William Carey. So, Pencil, Bethel, and they'll play tomorrow at 9 a.m. And our final here for game one at the legendary Patterson Field is 12-1. to Wildcats win by 11 over Bruton Parker. It's been a pleasure through game one. But game two will start in roughly about 40 minutes in between games here. And that will... Featured number eight, Bellhaven, the Blazers, versus number four, Martin Methodist Red Hawks. So final here, 12 to 1. Wildcats win by 11 runs in nine innings. And John Woodard improves to four and six in his 12th star. This guy, I'll highlight 12 Ks in this game and only gave up two hits. So that'll do it, 12 to 1. Wildcats will advance and then wrap it up for game one. Stick with us for an extended break, and we'll bring you game two between Bellhaven and Martin Methodist. You listen to Southern States Athletic Conference Sports Network. I had a dream, a beautiful dream. We know that for you, it's all about flavor. You want unique combinations that truly tempt your taste buds. Culinary classics that go to a whole new level. You like being served fresh takes on old favorites. All in a fun, stylish, casual place to be. All we want is to see that smile when you take your very first bite. So come see us at Nuke's Eatery.